Well, after all that, let's ask one of Australia's leading foreign affairs analysts, Tom Switzer of the Centre for Independent Studies, what will happen next. Tom, welcome. Fred, great to be with you. Tom, uh, Tom first, will, po will Putin launch a nuclear weapon? Well, you've got to remember he's now, uh, thanks to the inept performance of his military and the astonishingly impressive performance of the Ukrainian army, backed, of course, by NATO, he's well and truly on the back foot. He's a cornered, wounded animal. And um, if he's poked and provoked, there's no telling what he'll do. So it's not inconceivable that he, he might use tactical nuclear weapons either against uh, a NATO a country in Europe or against um, Ukraine. It's not altogether clear, but he's made it very clear that he's not bluffing. Well, the the strength of his nuclear weapons um, varies a lot. What would you, wh what strategy do you think he would use if he did go nuclear? Well, I think the first thing he'd do before he contemplates nuclear weapons would be to wipe out the electrical grid in Ukraine. That would be his best bet. You know, he'd want to escalate it. And this whole war, which has been raging since late February, has been a case of escalation. So he's been attacked by the Ukrainians with this bridge explosion, presumably, and he's up the ante by now launching missile strikes across Ukraine, and that'll force the Ukrainians to up the ante and, and so on and so forth. So um, uh, I think he'd probably be more likely to wipe out the electrical grid in Ukraine before he used nuclear weapons. Do you think he'd go so far as to hit a NATO target with a nuke? I think it's unlikely, but, um, you know, it's the 60th anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis. We haven't really been at this stage where the world is teetering on the, on the edge of a, a nuclear war um, in 60 years. This is the closest thing we've had in 60 years. And, it's a very unpredictable environment, and I don't think many Australians realise the situation that Putin finds himself in. I think a lot of people, quite understandably, are very happy that he's been beaten on the ground, um, not just in parts of the Donbass along the Ukrainian east, but even Crimea appears to be threatened. This was the Crimean Peninsula, which Russia annexed in 2014. That's also now vulnerable. And it gets back to my original point. If you're with a cornered, wounded animal and you start poking at it, um, that cornered, wounded animal can lash out in unpredictable ways. And that's why you have to take the nuclear threat very seriously. It's interesting that you bring up the Cuban Missile Crisis. I talked about that in my editorial. Uh, that um, Joe Biden invoked that in a speech on the weekend, uh, which he, I don't think he, he knew he was being recorded or, or it was being, uh, you know, written down, but he did invoke it. He and... was a fundraiser, wasn't it? Sorry? It was a fundraiser at uh, James Packer's house in New York. Oh, I didn't know there was an Australian connection. 